Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pat Magley with Heroes Count. Yet again, speaking about the necessity of the mandate called fasting and prayer. In Psalm 119, uh, verse 18, it says, Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. Man, I know so much in comparison to when I first got saved. But in comparison to where we're headed, I don't think I know nothing. And I think that there is a time to break up the fallow ground or the unused portions. And I think it's not me time, but we time, like we hours of the morning, very early. And that's what this podcast is going to be about, my life in the we. Hours of the morning, over in Psalm 119 and uh, verse number 55. The Bible says, I reflect at night on who you are, O Lord. Therefore, I obey your instructions. This is how I spend my life, obeying your commandments. When he said that he went to the mountain and he prayed all night and he's the patterned son of Jehovah God, what does that mean to us? Why are we not doing those things? Why do we not have a certain set of time to wake up early. And, you know, I've read about other people and what time they call early. Uh, some call it four, some call it five. Uh, I've been calling, getting up at uh, 12, 15. The witching hour, um, I found out in Baltimore, there's 200 witches that pray every night at midnight. Uh, what are we doing as believers? Uh, are we acting like unbelievers? I don't know. Uh, in Psalm 1, 47, Psalm 119 and uh, verse 147, talking about the early morning. There's something in it, you all. I'm telling you, I remember before I, I quit my job to come in and do Heroes Camp full time in 19 of May in 1990. And I even started it in 1989 and worked my job and a secular job and ran the ministry of Heroes Camp. And then God gave me the right moment at the right time. And boom, I mean, I gave my 30 day notice and quit after two weeks. I couldn't take it no more. It was the right moment to do the right thing. And I'm praying overnight now for a long time and uh, maybe 20, 25 years. And, and it just is something in it. When the rest of the world is quiet and everybody else is asleep, and even like when the weather's bad and cold and my, my expectations just source. But I remember when I had to be to work at five and work at five to work till five. And I would wake up early at three and I would pray from three to four in tongues and have Bible study. And I'd take a shower and I'd run to work 3.8 miles, huh? And then when I quit my job to come and do this full time and I learned about all night prayer, I learned about more about early morning prayer, you know, it just so revolutionized my constitution and my belief and faith about what God wants to do. And when I look in my rearview mirror and I look at all the things because I died to what I want, I died to sleep, I died to food, and these things came through my life. I didn't do it, but he did it because I was a dead man. Paul said, I die daily. Uh, in Psalm 140, in Psalm 119, 147, I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. I stay awake through the night thinking about your promises. What do you think God, what do you think God wants to show himself strong? You know, someone that overeats and sleeps in every day and has no prayer, you think they're going to get, and that's what the problem is right now. Everybody's on everybody's nerves because there's no, there's no nerve of the Holy Ghost in you to give you nerve to, to stand up and cry loud and cry loud, cry loud and, and, and uh, 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 shrink not. Don't shrink back. Don't shrink back from crying aloud and spare not. Lift your voices up like a trumpet. In verse number uh, um, 62, Isaiah, I mean, not Isaiah, excuse me, uh, Psalm 119 and verse number 62. I rise at midnight to thank you for your regulations. I worked on this this morning. I woke up and uh, I had a glass of water and I thought, well, I must go and have my Bible study right now. 
and it started speaking to me. And the Lord started to lead me, and I just wrote all this stuff down. And because I was, and I was up for two and a half hours. It wasn't even my prayer shift time. You know what I'm saying? But it was just worth it. And I, I, I laid back down. And my wife woke up a little bit, and I talked with her. And I said, "Babe, it's just, babe, we gonna get some sleep." I said, "Babe, not when I was talking like this." I, I wish you could hear what I just said. Not when the Holy Ghost is moving and talking like this. But no, three thousand people there. It was me and the Lord. Where's that at? That's the problem in the body of Christ. It's missing. Don't hear, don't hear me blowing my own horn. I'm not saying that. Why are we all doing something different? Hmm. Yeah. Um. Over in Second Corinthians. Um. In chapter 6, and in verse 5, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 5. The apostle Paul said in verse 4, in everything we do, we show that we are the true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We've been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights. Then sometimes you got some on your mind that rather than worry, you just wake up and pray. And I'm telling you, that thing right there that I just said mm -hmm, is a very precious thing to commodity to exercise frequently to keep you from the um, stipulations of this world in uh, Acts chapter 16 and in verse number 25. People are troubled today. Sixteen twenty-five. It says, around about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to, song, to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake. Do you realize that they were incarcerated, but they were on the offensive? They were not on the defense of belly aching and whining. They got up, and around about midnight, they were praying and said, suddenly, suddenly has an expectation when you have faith in what you're doing. No matter what time it is, day or night, but there's a special season from that midnight to about six in the morning. I found that to be the most fertile time of day. Those two watches, uh -huh, the third and the fourth watch. And other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors flew open, uh, immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners, prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself. We're all here. They were praying. They were praying. And that prayer was going to make him do something to himself. But they said, no, you you, you, you belong to this dude. Uh, you belong to this also. In verse number nine of chapter 16 of the book of Acts. That night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece. Once again, at night, after midnight, early morning, they were missing something, church. Believers don't be non-believers by eating too much, thinking that you got forever to pray and saying a few prayers rather than having, assign yourself a prayer watch. Three hours. The late great Reggie Lane said, everybody said that the Bible said, could you not watch with me one hour? Really, Jesus, man, can you not watch with me for three hours? I thought I was convicted when I heard that. And I already went from praying an hour to about 
two hour and 15 minutes. I only heard that. I need to only hear that one time. And then the lumen and that illumination brought the stimulation to exert my faith into a greater capacity of time. You know, all blessings come through time. There's no progress without investment. Let me say something. I told the guys last night at the camp, say, you know, everybody wants to sow a nominal seed and get a huge harvest. It don't, re it don't work that way because when you sow a nominal seed, what happens is your expectation is anemic because your seed was so small. But when you sow something and, and, and the little widow woman she gave, she gave her last two mice. People can give thousands of dollars. They got millions of dollars. They ain't gave nothing. She gave her last two nice mice. Sometimes when you give and you got to be up to work all day long, then you give and pray for three, four hours and do That's giving God. You're getting God's attention when you do that. Oh, in Psalm number one. I'm just a proponent of the early morning. I've been that all my, my whole life. Um, and I didn't know why, but when I got born again, I found out rapidly. I love the morning to pray. It's fresh. It's exciting. One and two. It says um, in Psalm 1 and, and verse 2. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. And not just during the day. And I remember the days that I lived that way. When I got home, I would watch basketball. Sometimes I still do or tennis or movies or whatever. But more and more, I learned, you know, that started to get kind of corny. You know what I'm saying? I, maybe I just, I got a lot of books to read and things to take notes. And, you know, I just want to be wet. I in a season of uh, where the people are dry. You know, I want to be wet when people are dry. I want to be, you know, have the oil of the Lord in, in lubricating my life, the anointing of God. Um, over in Psalm 77, verse 2 through 6. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long, I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed with longing for his help. You don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days, long since ended, when my nights were filled with joyful songs and I searched for my soul and pondered the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me? Will he never be kind to me? In his unfailing love gone forever? It Have his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? He has he slammed the door on my compassion? I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. But then I recall all you've done. Oh, sometimes, you know, when you're not thinking right, you wonder if those your thoughts are demonic thoughts. He said, but then I recall. Isn't it good to have recall? Isn't it good to have total recall? I remember your wonderful deeds done long ago. Maybe God just wanted to remind him of that. And that's why he got him up late or early in the morning, in the wee hours in the morning or overnight. I, I just don't think, I cannot, I cannot brag on what God has put in overnight. And how people don't know. Um, over in uh, 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 Psalm number 63. And in verse number six, I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. So often I pray for my wife overnight. I lay hands on her and I pray for her. She's asleep I, and she takes such good care of me. But I wanted to know how much I appreciate her. I wanted to know how much God loves y'all. Speak into her ears. Uh, I pray for her. I lay hands on her feet. I just talk to her every, every the footsteps of a righteous woman are ordered of the Lord. When you're married to someone, it's a proverbial 31. I tell you, you don't want to, you don't want to sleep overnight. You want to just wake up and thank God what they have done for you. I cannot do what I do without my wife. I can't say that enough. She's the greatest gift, grace gift I've ever experienced. Over in Psalm 88 and verse 
Number one. O oh Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out to you by day. I come to you at night. It says it repeatedly. What are we doing? What are our time? We stay up late, we're late, and we're on uh, Facebook and all that other madness, you know. <clears throat> and when it's time to lock yourself in with God and, 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 and make you renew your covenant with Him, isn't He worthy? Psalm one hundred eight and verse two. <clears throat> Wake up, liar and heart! I will. Awaken the dawn with my song. I will thank the Lord among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. There's nothing like coming to prayer at about 20 or 3 in the morning and got the music on, praying in tongues, get here, unlock the building, sit down, cut the light off, put some more music on, and begin praying in tongues for about an hour, hour and a half, walk in the gym, and, 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 and have Bible study, other books, take notes, engage God, get God to manifest to you by showing him how much you love him. Mm -hmm. Over in Mark 1, 35. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up, went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. Why were they looking for him? Because they know he had been in prayer. He knew that he had something to say. He knew that he had revolution in his bones and revelation in his mouth and in his mind. When is it our time to exhibit? And, and he had eased the pattern, son, why do we sleep in so late? And I'm, I'm not talking about the sleep isn't precious, but I'll tell you what, let God make you a sweet sleeper than it is because you obeyed him about early morning prayer. Uh, over in Matthew uh, chapter 14 and in verse 23 through 25. After sending them home, he went up into the hills to pray by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from the land, and a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When his disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In fear, they cried out. They thought it was a ghost. Come on. But Jesus spoke to them. Don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I'm here. And then Peter called to him. Lord, if it's really you, tell me you to come out walking on water. Well, they already been out there fishing all night. Huh? And rowing and every other thing. Why not be up all night instead of fishing and rowing? Why don't you be up all night praying? I can't say, I, mean, I don't want to be dogmatic about this, but I, I think it's a necessity. And I think it's part of, a, 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 I think there's an entourage of unanswered prayer that are waiting to come through people that are pray. Oh, over in Luke 6, One day, soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. He prayed all night about some weighty issues. We got weighty issues. We got children. We have schools to go to. We have, I mean, in South Bend, then we got, I, I, I pray for the police. When I'm riding the neighborhood in the night and on the way to prayer, I pray for the, the bus drivers. I pray for the school teachers. I pray, I pray for the city county building. I pray, I pray, I pray because the Bible said that men ought always to pray and not think. Prayer is such an inexhaustible topic. There's no way that you can hem something in 
uh, 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 talking about prayer. Prayer makes every issue larger because it makes it possible. Over in uh, Acts chapter number 20. And in verse number seven, on the first day of the week, we gathered uh, with the local believers to share in the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching them, and since he was leaving the next day, he kept talking until midnight. Uh, the upstairs rooms were met where, where they met were lighted with many flickering lamps. As, as spoke Paul, as Paul spoke on and on. It's midnight. He's speaking on and on. A man named Eutychus, uh, sitting in the window, so became very drowsy, finally fell asleep, dropped three stories to his death. Paul went down, bent over, took him up in his arms. Don't worry, he's alive. Paul continued talking to them until dawn. He stayed up ministering and praying to the saints all night long. And that's, that shows God something, that the very thing that we're needed, we need sleep. You know what I'm saying? Before we need sleep. We need air. We need water. We need sleep before we need food. But we eat food and then we we don't sleep right because our conscience isn't clean because we don't pray. I remember my days like that before I got born again. I'm coming up on 41 years and I'm honored to say the Lord has kept me. Um, over in uh, uh, Matthew 8, 24. Suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Sometimes when you have sleep, sweet sleep because you prayed at night. Some of the best rest I ever have during the week is when I come home from praying at night. A lot of times I'm up praying at home for two, two, three hours before I even come to the camp and pray for, for four hours. And I, I'm just telling you, I don't miss prayer. I don't I don't want to miss my prayer ship. The Bible says it's better to not vow a vow than vow a vow and not keep it. <laughs> well, um, let's look over to Exodus 33, 14. The Lord replied, I will go personally with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. His primary source was not sleep. His primary source of rejuvenation was the rest that the Lord gave him. He said, uh, 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 in, in Exodus 33, 14. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses. I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Rest became more important than sleep because rest came from the Lord. Um, let's look over in Isaiah and in chapter number 40. And in verse number 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weary and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. Sleep is overrated with the rest that's in the Lord. He could give us rest. Those that wait on him, you know. Uh, 
and those that trust in him. Uh, I could go on and on and on, but these scriptures, I, I think that uh, I've got my point across to you. Um, for sure, we know the student is not above his master. I think maybe the number one thing that probably made Jesus set aside more than anybody that ever lived on this planet was surely is that he's the son of God. But nobody forewent the pleasures of this life um, than Jesus did. Um, he did eat, but he fasted more. He did sleep, but he stayed up all night. And um, he mastered fasting by when he came off, he had moderation. And he also mastered sleep by taking naps in between times when he would be up all night. Then he would maybe pray from nine o'clock in the evening to six o'clock in the morning. Then he wouldn't sleep the rest of the day. He'd get his rest on and God would be in his rest. And then he'd get up and go minister to people. I'm telling you, our future generations are on the line of what it means to be a Christian. Our future generations are children on the line that we need to be praying for. They don't know nothing about the Trinity. They don't know nothing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They don't know nothing about the Ten Commandments. They don't know nothing about the fear of the Lord. They don't know anything about respect for authority, respect to honor thy mother and father. And the reason we don't is because we don't teach them. We think it's Christian TV to teach them. No, it ain't. I mean, thank God the Christian television does teach them. But what I'm saying is it's the parent's job to teach the children, to put them on what's going on with this life. If the parent don't know that, who's going to teach them? Welcome to Heroes Camp. I'm signing off right now. I love you. The Lord bless you. Please find the early morning prayer time. If you need somewhere to come to pray, uh, we're here at 3 o'clock in the morning. We're here at 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. We worship from 8.30 to 10. I love you. My name is Pat Magley, challenging to be somewhere early in the morning. Be where you ought to be when you ought to be there. All up in there doing what you ought to be doing. Wake up again, do it tomorrow, and call it a breakthrough. The Lord bless you. Wake up early. Go to bed early.